Welcome to another episode of Conscious Business Connections brought to you by the New York City chapter of Conscious Capitalism. My name is Bob Caparelli, and I'm joined today by Robert Herzog of Zog Sports located right here in New York City. Robert, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bob. Great, great to be here. Oh, great. Great to have you. This is fantastic. So, Rob, as you know, um, there's a lot of, of businesses in New York City, right? <laughs> and what we try and do on this show is really highlight some of the businesses that are practicing conscious business principles and adopting mm -hmm. conscious business practices. And um, Conscious Capitalism is an organization that kind of organizes those principles around four main areas, ranging from higher purpose to conscious leadership, to conscious culture, to stakeholder alignment. We really try and focus on one or more of those areas on this show. So with that as a lead in, why don't you tell us a little bit about Zog Sports? And I know you have other ventures that are connected to it and connected to your overall purpose. So give us just a little background on Zog Sports and some of the other ventures that you have. Yeah, absolutely. So the way that I look at it is I actually start with an overarching why I get up every morning. And that's that I believe that life is better when you have real personal connections, feel like you're part of a caring community and infuse a sense of play into your life. Great. So I basically run a portfolio of four businesses, all of which have that same purpose of connections, community and play. So the first is Zog Sports, which is basically recreational sports leagues for grownups. So it's everything from what I call real sports like uh, soccer and football and uh, volleyball and basketball and things like that to fun sports like kickball and dodgeball and bocce and cornhole and things like that. So you don't necessarily have to be like super athletic for all these things, right? And in each of the, <laughs> and in, absolutely not. And in each sport, we actually have multiple levels of competition from kind of ex, you know, high school, college athlete down to, I just want to meet people. That's awesome. That sounds uh, like I'm, I'm kind of more on the bottom of that tier, I think, but that's great. <laughs> everyone, everyone who can kind of call themselves a recreational athlete is welcome. That's awesome. Um, the second business is Zog uh, Culture, which basically does connections, community, and play for employees at work. Mm. That business actually has two components to it. It has an in-person component, which is basically in-person corporate events, whether team building in your office, field days, holiday parties, and those kinds of experiences. But we also are running a very vibrant virtual connection uh, experiences for companies, where it's everything from um, virtual connection activities like uh, trivia and who kidnapped the boss and murder mystery to uh, purely social experiences like mixology and cooking classes to health and wellness classes um, to some diversity, equity, and inclusion workshops to actually running conferences, uh, internal conferences and strategic planning kinds of things for companies uh, across multiple time zones, across multiple offices and things like that. That's awesome. Um, so that's the second business. And again, all about connections, community, and play. Yep. Um, the third business is called Combine Z, which is the concept is group fitness is train like an athlete. So mm. it's not that you want to train like an athlete so you can become the best basketball player ever. It's, it's that you want to use athlete kinds of training methodologies to actually have group fitness experiences where you're actually just going to be uh, kind of more fit and things like that. So that business is both in-person and virtual classes. Got it. Um, and then I started leveraging everything that I uh, have experienced running these businesses over the past uh, close to 20 years. Uh, and I actually started a CEO coaching practice, wow. uh, which I started during COVID because it's something I thought I might love to do over the next 20 years. <laughs> And uh, I actually am leveraging everything I've done, uh, both as a CEO uh, and as a, a reformed management consultant, and also as a uh, basically youth sports coach, where I've actually now uh, coached 80 youth sports teams over the past 10 years. Wow. Um, so I now have a whole bunch of uh, CEOs who I am coaching on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And those uh, companies are all between say 25 employees and 250 employees. Uh, several of the companies are venture backed. Um, and I help with everything from uh, accountability, 
uh, to systems and processes, to uh, being an innovation and kind of strategy partner, to actually just making sure that I'm kind of a whole life coach, right? Yeah. Where people remember that they started this business to actually have some fun. Unbelievable. So, I mean, the first thing that, that strikes me about this is, you know, I don't know where you're getting all this time. This is amazing, right? This is like fantastic. But what's really cool and really talks to this idea of higher purpose, you know, when you, when you lead with, I have these businesses and they're all tied together with the same purpose, it all of a sudden makes these, what could be looked at as disparate businesses all come together in one common area. And it also changes the face of what the business might stand for, right? Like if you, it, when, when I first kind of, you know, talked to you or, or heard about your business, you hear about Zog Sports and you think, oh, it's a sports company, right? It's about competitive sports, but it's actually not, right? It's about making those connections and relationships and things of that nature. And the same can be said of any of the other businesses. You could have a coaching business that's, you know, focused purely on profit, or you could have one that's focused on bringing different culture and connections and so forth. So it really talks to how that purpose really ties everything together. Do you feel that that's happening on the street as well as you're running these businesses that you're really able to weave them together through that purpose? Yeah, Bob, great question. Uh, I actually think it actually gives us a sense of focus Yeah. because it actually helps us make decisions, right? So we could come out with um, new programs for the Zog Culture virtual business, right? Um, but every one of them, we run up against our purpose. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Which is, you know, do we believe that these things are actually helping make connections happen at the company? Do we actually think that it's helping the company create caring, a caring community? And are they fun? Yeah, right. So it actually allows us to take things that don't fit that mission and not do them. So it actually really helps us focus. So talk about having your why, your purpose, drive your decision-making down, as you said, you said on the street level. Um, it, it really does help those things. For example, when we'll run a, a particular, pick a particular activity uh, that we're doing for, um, say, the, the, the brand new business, you know, the Combine Z uh, group fitness business, we basically built it around the concept of team. Well, mm. group fitness is kind of like, Everyone kind of goes and you're all in the same place at the same time. It's not really team focused. Yeah. We basically break people up into teams, make sure that they know each other's names on those teams, and they encourage each other during a level of competition at the end of the workout. There you right? go. So it's very purposeful to actually achieve the why into kind of what we do on a ground level. Yeah. And, and what's so cool about it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a fitness company, but it's, that's not really what you have, right? I mean, you have you have a, a company that's driving connections at an interpersonal level through fitness, right? It sounds to me anyway, that's which that's which is a really different different strategy, and I think really effective. So so I think that that's so cool. Now I want to talk a little bit about why this purpose is so important, right? Because especially as we go through cultural you know uh, evolution in business and and in life. Um, why do you think it's so important to continue to create these connections, both in the personal areas and the business areas, fitness areas, and so forth? What is, what is it? You said it, it helps you get out of bed, right? <laughs> so, so what is it about Which that? It's been that hard to do for the last 10 years. I know. That's why, that's why it struck me, right? My commute is yeah. very short. <laughs> Mine too. I, oh. I just made it actually. It's right here. But yeah. So like, tell me a little bit about why you think that that's yeah. such an important thing for companies to embrace. Absolutely. Look, um, the, you know, the uh, Tony Shea uh, kind of Zappos concept of the four dri drivers of happiness. Uh, there are four, sense of purpose, mm -hmm. sense of connectedness, sense of progress, and sense of control, right? So what I try to do in a way is my own version of, of really driving happiness out into the world, mm. okay? So sense of connectedness is one of the hardest things to do, and it's been, been one of the hardest things to do, certainly during the pandemic right, is what can we do to actually facilitate connectedness in the world? Yeah. What can we do to actually facilitate community in the world and actually give people a sense of control over that, right, through the concept of being on a team, whether it's a work team, uh, a group fitness team, or a sports team in our Zog Sports Leagues, 
using that model of being on a team where everybody is supporting each other and you're trying to have a common goal of actually trying to win the game or the competition or the trivia contest or, or you know, the who kidnapped the boss contest or whatever it is, um, by, by kind of using those mechanisms of creating a sense of connectedness, it actually really increases happiness, mm. right? So that, 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 that's kind of how it all ties, ties together. Yeah. And I think it's so cool too, because I, I spent, you know, 25, 20, 25 years, something like that in the corporate world before I started, you know, doing independent entrepreneur type ventures. And, um, and I remember being sent, I, I didn't think it was this at the time, but I'll, looking back on it, I was sent to a leadership course with other leaders that I thought was going to be really fun. Right. It was like, you know, it wasn't quite a ropes course, but you know, the idea behind like right, the team right. building and bonding and things of that nature. And once we got there and we started doing it, I quickly started to realize that the, the event was more about benefit to the company than benefit to us. Right. It was almost like we felt like we were broken and needed to be fixed. And that's what this was all about instead of, you know, Hey, you guys can benefit from this and become happier. And that's going to benefit the company in a different way. Do you, do you see that a lot in companies as well? Yeah. Well, look, you know, of, of course, you know, look, everything we do should also benefit the company. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's not only about benefiting your employees, but a happy employee is actually going to care more about their coworkers and is going to care more about the company. And then therefore they're good. And then thus they will care more about the quality of the work that they do. And you'll actually have a increased longevity of employment. Right. And, and if you look at, you know, there's, there's a curve in terms of uh, productive employment, right? The first six months people are, you know, not as productive. And then, you know, the next two years, they're incredibly productive or the next five years, they're incredibly productive. And then when someone wants to leave, they, they you know, they, you know, their productivity declines. What, what, we're, what of, of course, what we're doing is ultimately, hopefully productive uh, for the company, but it starts with the employee. Yeah. Right. And the same thing, you know, with the sports, our sports business It's like, sure, we want you to play soccer so that you can actually become more fit and more like, but it's also just getting you to leave your apartment. Right. And commit to something leads to sense of control in your life, leads to sense of progress, leads to you actually having, you know, making friends and connecting with the friends you have already. Yeah. All of that actually uh, you know, kind of helps improve your own life, which then, you know, kind of manifests itself and it, it, it multiplies. It has a ripple effect, right? And, and I think that I just love this discussion because, you know, you throw out the words higher purpose and in conscious capitalism, we do that all the time. And people are like, well, of course, every company has a purpose, everything else. But I think this is just a great example of how the purpose can take the same event or the same business and completely change it, right? It completely changes it from one thing to another. And I think that's why having a purpose that's so clear is so important. Um, now you talk about um, the pandemic and I know obviously Zog Sports is, you know, based on people being in close contact to some extent. Um, I'm sure you've had to pivot. What has that been like for you? How, how have you pivoted um, during the pandemic with especially that business? Yeah, sure. Um, if you'd said to me back 10 months ago, hey, Rob, how are you going to feel? Uh, you know, do you think you're diversified? Uh, if you'd said to me 10 months ago, do you think you're diversified? I would have said, well, of course, I think I'm diversified. We're in six cities. You know, we have 125, 150,000 people playing in our leagues. We had wow. hundreds and hundreds of clients for Zog Culture running, you know, 50 to 100 events every year. Um, we, I mean, yeah, of course we diversified, right? except that we were like a hundred percent public public gathering business. Right. And who would have thought, right? Yeah, right. So um, I still feel we were diversified. So what we did was we actually we went back to our mission and we said, okay, well, what can we do where we can be appropriately socially distant and you know still actually focus on connections, community, and play. Yeah. So for the Zog sports business, we actually started doing uh, a little bit of trivia. And for those people, we actually created the Combine Z business, 
where oh, you, you, I see. You can so that was kind of, of an be, offshoot of that. I yeah, know. you can be appropriately socially distant and still get a good workout. And, you know, uh, you can be outdoors and six feet apart and wearing, you know, uh, with appropriate, um, you know, distance, but still get a good workout and feel a sense of team mm. while not guarding each other in basketball, right? Right. Yep. Um, for, uh, and the biggest pivot, though, that we made, Bob, was uh, was really our Zog culture business. And for that business, you know, we went from, you know, revenue here to zero, right? right. In, in, for in-person corporate events. Yeah. What's so interesting is we had maybe 5% of our business in, in 2019 was a, was, a, was a virtual business. A bunch of companies had said, hey, we're doing this field day for 300 people, but we have 50 people from all over the world who were not flying in for this event. Do you have something that you could do with them and we'll bring our management team in so they feel like they're still connected and part of the company. Right. And we actually had and developed some products for them that then wound up becoming the foundation of an entire virtual business. Interesting. So not just translating to this kind of a thing, but actually having something that replaces the hands-on connection. Exactly. So that business, we completely pivoted and that business has, has grown substantially to the point where we are, you know, you know, working with companies as small as kind of 20, 30 people and companies like large financial institutions with 60,000 employees. Wow. Right. So we're, we're, which is actually more, we're, more of our companies are the thousand and up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, working with global brands um, that are, you know, don't have the capabilities to do what we do, but understand that they really need to help people feel connected to each other and to the company. Uh, because with company culture, you actually need to keep reinvesting in it. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like a bank account, right. Where you, you know, the bank account, like, you know, gradually goes down as you, as you spend, you spend the money and you have to keep replenishing the bank account. Right. It's the same thing with company culture. You have to keep replenishing it. Right. And so that's a lot of what we're doing is helping them replenish their company culture. Um, and, and, and we're doing stuff where in the past they were doing a lot of stuff on their own and we were working with them like once or twice a year. Now for many of these companies, we're actually doing something with them every month or mm. even some every other week. And we're tying it to, um, we're tying it to life cycle events like, Oh, we're hiring our new summer associates for, you know, a law firm, or we've got this internship program, but you know, they're all virtual. Um, or, you know, we have a new class or it's around strategic planning, you know, annual budgeting and strategic planning um, and those kinds of things. Got it. So, so it's not, it's not necessarily just different tools. It's a different, it's different content, different frequency, different delivery, that kind of a thing. Absolutely. I mean, we really, I mean, the thing I'm actually most proud of, of my team is how we reinvented ourselves this year. Right. That's so but cool. we did it with, in the same purpose. Yeah. Right. So I feel like it's so consistent, which is, again, why it's so important to have that purpose, because as you pivot, you want to make sure that you stay to it. Right. If we didn't have that purpose, I'm not sure that we would have known which way to focus, because yeah. you know, look, sure, there's a lot of opportunities that it's a lot of things we could have done. You know, we could have gotten into, I don't know, procuring PPE for people. Right. Yes, which some yeah. companies did. We've talked to some, several of them. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that, you know, that's that, that's admirable. Uh, because it was necessary, but that that's it, it doesn't meet our mission. It's not who you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, um, and you know, and I had some people, you know, we could have become a, you know, a reseller, right? And you know, that's just not who we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Interesting. It, it was incredibly helpful to have that sense of purpose so that we could actually be focused. So great. It's such a great example of why purpose is important. Now I have to ask the big question, which is, you know, so here we are, we're not out of the woods by any stretch no. of the imagination. Things are nowhere near back to normal, especially in New York city um, and the surrounding areas. What do you think the future looks like? I mean, from a standpoint of connection is so important and being together with people is so important. Do you think this type of thing uh, can, can replace that in the long term? Do we have to get back to, personal connections in an in-person level or some mix in between? What, what's your experience telling you this time? Uh, let me answer the question in two ways. Let me answer it from a, what do I think is going to happen in the world? And then let me ask, answer it in what do I think is going to happen in the workplace? 
Yep. Um, so in the world, I think that there are many people who are chomping at the bit right now to basically say, yeah, vaccine or no vaccine, I'll wear a mask, I'll go play right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think there are other people who are going to take significantly longer to put themselves in group settings, mm-hmm. you know, of over a certain number of people. I think people are going to be very cautious, even after the vaccine, even, you know, kind of after, you know, the height of the pandemic has waned. I still think there's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that in big cities uh, that we're going to see the next six months are going to be difficult. And then I think after that, things will start to ramp up, but I don't think we'll see things getting back to really more what we call normal. Right. Really till the second half of 2021, it will start. And then 2022 is when I think people will be like, yeah, I'll go to the movies now. Yeah. Right. Or I'll go to a concert now. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think people will play outdoor team sports and, and things like that. But do I think people will do a lot of, in-person corporate events in 2021? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Um, So answering the second part of the question, which is what I think is going to happen in the workplace. I believe that you cannot ever completely replace in-person connection. Mm -hmm. However, I do believe that there are many work functions that are significantly better done by yourself in your apartment or your house. In-person meetings, collaboration, innovation, strategic planning, all those things should be done in person in teams, Yep. in an office. And that's a certain number of days per week. Yep. I believe, however, that there are certain activities like your focused work where you're actually really cranking on executing those things are significantly better done at home because there's fewer distractions. Yeah. So I believe that what we're, we're going to see is a hybrid workplace. And I believe that there will be hybrid collaboration experiences for employees. Yeah. So I believe that there'll be some in-person stuff, but I believe that the virtual stuff that we're doing right now will continue. Which I think is a good thing, right? I mean, we, we are creatures of habit. We've learned the new technique and new tools and frankly, you know, I, I wouldn't mind. I, I agree with you that I don't think that that we should go completely virtual all the time because we do need personal connections. But I would love to see companies move towards bringing people together based on purpose rather than distrust, right? Which was, I yeah. think, kind of requiring people to be in the office, you know, ten hours a, a day, five days a week. A lot of a lot of that, I think, is because well, unless you're not unless you're here working and we can see you, we assume you're not working. That's the wrong reason to bring people right. together. But when you bring them together around real events that need to bring people together, I think that is a good thing, by and large, for companies to embrace. Well, Rob, I'll tell you, it's been a great conversation. I know a lot of people will have learned a lot from this. Um, so nice. thank you so much for being a guest and joining us today. Um, I don't want to let you leave, though, without giving people an opportunity to learn more about your businesses. What's the best place they can go to to find out more about some of the things that you're doing? Oh, absolutely. Um, so Zog Sports is just zogsports.com. Zog Culture is zogculture.com. Um, and uh, our Combine Z business is combine-z.com. And uh, for the CEO coaching, uh, you can... Uh, just go to my LinkedIn profile, Robert Herzog, uh, or you can type in uh, Robert Herzog CEO coach and it'll, it'll pop up as a, as a link. Awesome. Lot, lots for people to do, which is great. We'll put the links in the, uh, in the description as well. So awesome. all that's fantastic. So again, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. And I want to thank everyone out there for joining us as well. If you liked what you heard, you learned something, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share it, tell your friends. This is all about education. We're just volunteering our time to be able to make sure we spread these very positive principles that we believe very firmly and think can make uh, the world a better place. So hopefully you'll join us in that endeavor. So until next time, we'll see you back here on another episode of Conscious Business Connections. We hope you'll join us then. And Rob, thank you again. We'll see you next time as well. Excellent. Thanks, Bob. All right. Take care.